Antibiotics are the great success story of modern medicine. Before, even a minor bacterial infection could implicate your death. Then, with the discovery of penicillin, thousands of lives were saved. Today, the bacterial threat to humankind is back. Unfortunately, the big pharmaceutical industry stopped almost completely to do natural products chemistry because it's quite uh, an expensive and a long-term investment to do natural products research. And we urgently need here more investments because at the moment already people are dying from not having suitable drugs to treat their infections. Dr. Till Schäberle explains the basic competition between bacteria and humankind. We have to accept that the bacteria will always develop resistance mechanisms. They want to survive. They have to become resistant against it. That's the normal way. The rigid measures must be taken, such as performing clinical surveillance, documenting and reducing antibiotic use in veterinary and pest management, and offering advanced training for people handling antibiotics. However, as important these steps are, they will not alone solve the problem. The bacteria will always find a way to become resistant against the antibiotics. In the Science and Society article published in the renowned journal Trends in Microbiology, Schäberle discusses the resistance problem together with the political scientist Ingrid Hack. She explains that the current situation is not least a political challenge. The development of new antibiotics currently seems deadlocked. The pharmaceutical industry, which owns the financing power and the expertise, have decreased their programs. The returns on investment are too low and the development of an antibiotic just doesn't pay off. So we cannot wait for the market to solve this deficit. The article should make aware of the potential of the problem to escalate. Multi- and even pan-resistant germs are life-threatening to patients and employees in hospital settings as well as in the outpatient area. But is there a realistic prospect in the foreseeable future? Schäberle and Hack point out four aspects of an outline solution. So we need to lower um, regulatory hurdles, which are probably too high. It is questionable if a new antibiotic really has to show superior activity to the existing ones, as long as resistance breaking mechanism and drug safety are given. This would be particularly of interest in the sense of a combination therapy, a strategy which can prevent or at least delay resistance development. Launching well-designed public-private partnerships could contribute to the solution. Then the funding of research and development would be distributed onto different players from academia, from industry and government. Different actors could combine their individual strengths in order to follow the common interest. Research and development should be organized on a global level to prevent time and cost-consuming duplication of studies. Further, a key focus must be to put basic research on a broad basis. Professor Saal is speaker of a research unit investigating promising new antibiotic strategies. If pharmaceutical industries need new input, they first need basic research from which they can then take ideas, strategies and compounds into the clinical development. Acknowledging this innovation gap, Europe and the US recently have initiated partnerships that are pointing into the right direction. The decisive step now is to transform them into self-sustaining entities. Bacteria won't stop developing resistances, so we should not stop developing new antibiotics. Thank <laughs> you.